you can switch it off. Yes. So okay, peritoneum. Peritoneum. Uh, peritoneum uh, is a serous membrane that covers internal organs of abdominal cavity and internal surface of abdominal wall. So here we can see peritoneum. This is peritoneum, yes, everywhere. This is this also peritoneum. When we studied liver, we were saying that this falciform ligament is also formed by uh, double layer of peritoneum. So, uh, and we said, what is the difference between adventitia and serosa? Adventitia, both of them are connective tissue layers. But serosa is also covered by a single layer of mesothelium, and that's why it is, we can see, uh, its surface is very smooth, yes? In adventitia, it is rough. So, uh, peritoneum, uh, peritoneum, I think it's it will be more correct, it has two layers. So when peritoneum covers abdominal wall, it is parietal layer of peritoneum. Here we can see parietal layer of peritoneum. When it covers internal organs, it is visceral peritoneum. Between parietal and visceral peritoneum, there is a slit-like uh, cavity that is named peritoneal cavity. It is filled in with a smaller amount uh, of serous fluid uh, that is necessary to prevent friction. Because we know that uh, intestines are, are able for peristalsis and big vessels, they have pulsation, yes? So organs, they move in relation to each other. So to prevent friction, here in the peritoneal cavity, there is serous fluid. Okay, so uh, cavity, yes. We also have to know that uh, peritoneal cavity uh, can be divided into two stories. So, uh, superiorly, um, peritoneal cavity is bounded by peritoneum that covers inferior surface of the diaphragm. Inferiorly, it covers pelvic floor. And um, we should also distinguish um, abdominal cavity and peritoneal cavity. Abdominal cavity, we were talking about it before, that abdominal cavity is bounded superiorly by diaphragm and inferiorly by pelvic inlet. How is pelvic inlet formed? You should again revise. Yes, terminal line. Peritoneal cavity, yes, it is slit-like structure that is between parietal and visceral layers of peritoneum. Abdominal cavity contains all the organs which are located here between diaphragm and pelvic inlet. Peritoneal cavity doesn't contain any organs. There is the only exception that is ovary. In females, ovaries are located inside the peritoneal cavity. Why it is so, we will talk when we reach um, female reproductive system. Okay, so abdominal cavity and peritoneal cavity is not the same. You should know the differences. So peritoneal cavity, as I have told you, we can divide into two stories, which belong to abdominal cavity, and there is also peritoneum of pelvic, of the pelvis, of true pelvis. So here in the abdominal cavity, boundary between superior and inferior story passes uh, through transverse colon and its mesocolon. What is it mesocolon? So peritoneum, when it goes from parietal to visceral layers, it forms different structures which help in fixation of uh, organs of abdominal cavity. Like, for example, ligaments. Yes, here we can see falciform ligament, for example, that helps in fixation of the liver to the diaphragm. Yes, there is hepatoduodenal ligament between duodenum and liver. It is also formed by two layers of peritoneum. That's it. Yes. Also, the other derivative of peritoneum, these are mesenteries. These are mesenteries. So, mesenteries. Uh, here it is. Mesenteries are formed uh, by double layer of peritoneum also. Uh, they help in fixation of intestines. And the small intestine, you remember, yes? So peritoneum starts from posterior, uh, in case of formation of mesentery, it starts from posterior wall of abdominal cavity, it goes to the loop of intestine, to the coil of intestine, surrounds it from all the sides, then it goes backward, and it gets attached to posterior abdominal wall back.
So this is mesentery. We were saying that small intestine is divided into mesenteric and non-mesenteric parts. So mesenteric part is jejunum and ileum because both of them, these parts of small intestine, they are located intraperitoneally. It means they are covered by peritoneum from all the sides, yes? And they have mesenteries. mesenteries. So besides function of fixation of intestines to posterior abdominal wall, it also helps in blood and nerve supply. So if you look here very attentively, you will see that between two layers of mesentery, yes, there are numerous vessels. Yes, we can see these are blood vessels to supply intestines. Also, there are lymph nodes, these are lymph nodes. No, and nerves are also present, we just don't see them. No, we cannot distinguish here. Ma'am, lymph nodes are so present. Yes, here they are. These are lymph nodes. Yeah. Yes. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I will doubt in mm -hmm. the after okay. okay, so not only fixation, but Let also go. blood and nerve supply. Uh, blood and nerve. Blood vessels and nerves, they pass between two leads of peritone, which form mesentery. So in case of small intestine, such structure is named mesentery. In case of uh, large intestine, it is named mesocolon, because uh, large intestine, it is colon, yes? So for transverse colon, it is mesocolon. For sigmoid colon, that is also located intraperitoneally, it is mesosigma. This is mesosigma, we can see it, and so on, and so on. Uh, the third derivative of peritoneum, this is omentum. So there are two types of momentum, greater and less momentum. Greater momentum starts from greater curvature of stomach, less momentum starts from lesser curvature of stomach. So less momentum is formed by two layers of peritoneum, and it is formed by two ligaments, a hepatoduodenal, that I have already told you, yes, between liver and duodenal, and hepatogastric, that is between liver and lesser curvature of stomach. This is lesser momentum. Greater momentum is, um, starts from greater curvature of stomach. Then we have already said that here in the large intestine there is a mental tenia, yes? So it is slightly attached to the mental tenia of transverse colon. And then it goes also downward. Uh, up to the lesser pelvis. In some people, uh, it depends on the uh, development of fatty tissue, yes? And it consists of four layers of peritoneum. So, um, two layers of peritoneum start from greater curvature of stomach, and they move downward, then they form curvature, So, and two layers go backward and move to posterior abdominal wall. We'll uh, try to draw it uh, in the... Blackboard, the blackboard a little bit later. So between layers of peritoneum in greater momentum, there is fatty tissue, we can see it. This is fatty tissue. Okay, and now again I will try to return to stories. Two stories. Uh, superior story is bounded superiorly by parietal peritoneum that covers inferior surface of the diaphragm, and inferiorly it is transverse colon and mesocolon. So this is superior story. Inferior story superiorly is bounded by transverse colon and mesocolon, and superiorly by pelvic and lead. And below the pelvic inlet, up to the pelvic floor, it is um, peritoneum of the pelvic cavity, of the true pelvis. Mm -hmm. You have to know which structures are present in each story of peritoneal cavity. We will start with superior, with upper story. Here there are three bursi, bursi. hepatic bursa, a pregastric bursa, and behind the stomach there is a mental bursa, here. So hepatic bursa, here it is, bursa hepatica, it surrounds the liver, from its name it's clear, yes? You have to know the boundaries, so superiorly it is bounded by parietal peritoneum that covers inferior surface of the diaphragm, inferiorly it is uh, bounded by transverse colon and mesocolon, medially it is parietal peritoneum that covers lateral abdominal wall, and laterally I said yes, yes, and medially, uh, medially, in the upper part of hepatic bursa that forms suprahepatic fissure or subdiaphragmatic recess, it has the name, yes, subphrenic recess, uh, subphrenic recess, uh, medially there is falciform ligament. Um, 
superiorly in the infrahepatic fissure under the visceral surface of the liver, there, is, there are no boundaries and it freely communicates with pregastric bursa. With pregastric bursa. Also, hepatic bursa communicates with inferior story of peritoneal cavity. We'll talk about it later. Here there is a right lateral canal or right pericoli groove. So it also freely communicates. Why do we need to know these communications? Because in case of any purulent processes, any inflammatory diseases of, um, in the peritoneal cavity, yes, or any bleeding, for example, yes, we can detect pathological liquid, that is blood or pus, yes, for example, in hepatic bursa. But when we examine liver, we will see that liver is fine, yes, and we should suggest uh, from where does this, li did this liquid come here, yes, so that's why we have to know communications. So this is hepatic bursa. There is one more communication of hepatic bursa. It is communication with a mental bursa. That is Winslow foramen. Here it is about structure of Winslow foramen. We'll talk a little bit later when we reach a mental bursa. Okay. So pregastric bursa, bursa pregastrica, from its name it's also clear that it is located in front of the stomach, yes? So, uh, posterior wall of the pregastric bursa is formed by anterior surface of stomach. Superiorly, it is parietal peritoneum that covers inferior surface of the diaphragm. Inferiorly, it is again transverse colon and mesocolon. Laterally, it is parietal peritoneum that um, yes, covers lateral abdominal wall. Yes, And uh, medially, it really communicates with hepatic bursa. This is pregastric bursa. So a mental bursa, but actually we dissected it intentionally, yes? Uh, it was, from the very beginning, here there was uh, greater omentum. One of the parts of greater omentum, it is um, gastrocolic ligament. And omental bursa, uh, when we perform laparotomy, dissection of the abdomen, yes? We do not see a mental bursa at once. So to get into the mental bursa, to perform surgeries on the organs which are located there, like pancreas, for example, we need to dissect gastrocolic ligament first. So here we dissected gastrocolic ligament, now we can see it. A mental bursa anteriorly is bounded by posterior surface of stomach. Uh, superiorly, again, it is parietal surface of uh, parietal peritoneum that covers inferior surface of diaphragm. Inferiorly, uh, transverse colon and mesocolon, yes. Uh, medially, uh, no, medially, we can say left lobe of the liver. And a mental bursa, in the other books, you will find uh, another name, lesser sac, lesser sac. In English books, uh, you uh, also can find that the whole peritoneal cavity is divided into two sacs. Lesser sac, that is a mental bursa, and all the other structures, because they communicate with each other, they form greater sac. So a mental bursa is very close, that's why it is named lesser sac. There is the only communication between the mental bursa and the other structures, it is Winslow foramen, or a mental foramen, or epiploic foramen. It, its diameter is only like index finger, so here we can see it. You have to know boundaries, you have to know, yes, boundaries of this foramen. It has four boundaries, anterior, posterior, uh, superior and inferior. Anteriorly it is hepatoduodenal ligament, hepatoduodenal ligament. Inside the hepatoduodenal ligament, three very important structures pass uh, from lateral to medial, it is DVA, duct, vein, artery, common bile duct, the most lateral, then portal vein, and then the most medial, it is a proper hepatic artery. Yes, so that's why we should be very attentive uh, not to damage this structure. So anteriorly hepatoduodenal ligament, posteriorly hepatorenal ligament between the liver and the right kidney, uh, hepatorenal ligament, Superiorly, it is caudate lobe of liver. Here we can see it, caudate lobe of liver. And inferiorly, it will be superior part of duodenum. So that's you have to know very well. It is the only communication of a mental bursa with hepatic bursa, with all the other, mm, what is it, spaces of peritoneal cavity. What I forgot to tell you about pregastric bursa and the mental bursa as well. Inferiorly, it does not communicate with inferior story because here 
there is liver, or not liver, spleen, yes, and here there are two ligaments, uh, splenophrenic ligament, Splenocolic ligament between spleen and left colic flexure, splenocolic ligament and phrenocolic ligament. Here we can see it. These two ligaments do not allow communication of upper story with uh, lower story, where here there is a left lateral canal. Remember what's the meaning of phrenic? Phrenic, it's musculus phrenicus, diaphragm. Okay. So phrenicocolic is ligament between diaphragm and uh, left colic flexure. Uh -huh. Okay, then what's next? It was superior story. Now inferior story. In the inferior story, we have four structures, two sinuses and two canals. Okay, let's start with canals, it's easy. Uh, right lateral canal or right pericolic groove, canalis lateralis dexter, is located between ascending colon medially and lateral um, parietal peritoneum that covers lateral abdominal wall. That's it. So let, right lateral canal freely communicates with upper story with hepatic bursa and also it freely communicates with pelvic cavity. Yes? Mm -hmm. Left lateral canal or left pericolic groove is bounded by descending colon also medially and um, parietal peritoneum that covers lateral abdominal wall laterally. Inferiorly, it also freely communicates with pelvic cavity, but superiorly, due to the presence of these ligaments, which we have already mentioned, it does not communicate with upper story. Okay, and in the middle, here there are two sinuses, mesenteric sinuses, because they are separated from each other by means of mesentery of small intestine, right mesenteric sinus, sinus mesentericus dextrum, and left mesenteric sinus, sinus mesentericus sinister. That's it. So right mesenteric sinus is blind. It does not communicate with anything. It is bounded uh, laterally by ascending colon, superiorly by transverse colon, and inferomedially by root of mesentery of uh, mesenteric part of small intestine. That's it. Uh, left mesenteric sinus is bounded superamedially by root of mesentery uh, of small intestine, yes, laterally by descending colon uh, and sigmoid colon, and inferiorly it open, it is open to the pelvic cavity. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the pelvic cavity, um, peritoneum has different course in males and females. So in males, uh, there is urinary bladder in front, yes, and rectum behind. And between rectum and urinary bladder, there is like pouch, excava, excavation, excavatio recta vesicalis, recta vesical pouch. In females, between urinary bladder and rectum, there is also uterus, yes? And that's why uh, there is one pouch that is located between posterior surface of urinary bladder and uterus, that is uh, vesica uterine pouch, because urinary bladder in Latin it will be vesica urinaria. And between posterior wall of uterus and rectum, there will be recta uterine pouch. Um, or Douglas pouch, it's has a name. It is the deepest place in the peritoneal cavity in females. If we suspect any bleeding, okay, in case of accumulation of any pathological liquid due to the gravity, this pathological liquid in females will be accumulated in Douglas pouch, yes, because it is the deepest place. Okay, one more difference between peritoneal cavity uh, of males and females is that in males, peritoneal cavity is closed. It uh, does not communicate with external environment. In females, it communicates with external environment through uh, uterine tubes, uterus, and then vagina. Yes, so there is a communication. Okay. Uh -huh. In male cows, is present uh, anteriorly to reproductive organ or posteriorly? Urinary bladder is present anteriorly. Uh, you mean uh, seminal vesicles and prostate, yes? They are located in front of this pouch because prostate is below the urinary bladder. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Ah, yes. One more thing, it is cause of peritoneum on the anterior abdominal wall. Here, on the anterior abdominal wall, a peritoneum forms five folds and six fossae. 
So first here, in the very middle, there is median umbilical fold, plica umbilicalis mediana. It goes from the apex of urinary bladder to the umbilicus, and it contains urachus, uh, urinary duct, during embryogenesis, during fetal period, it served for before formation of urethra, it served for elimination of urine from the urinary bladder. Then there are two medial umbilical folds, plica umbilicalis medialis, it is speared. In it, umbilical arteries pass. Uh, they serve only, they work uh, only in fetuses. Through the umbilical arteries, venous blood goes to the umbilicus, to the umbilical cord, then to the placenta for gas exchange, yes? Uh, by the moment of birth, they overgrow with connective tissue. And lateral umbilical fold, plica umbilicalis lateralis, it is here, plica umbilicalis lateralis, it is also paired here, and the other one is here, we can see. Uh, it is formed by inferior epigastric arteries. Inferior epigastric arteries are branches of external iliac arteries, and they function even after birth, so they are filled in with blood. Between these folds, there are fossae. So between median and medial umbilical folds, there is supravesical fossa, fossa supravesicalis. Between medial and lateral, there is uh, medial inguinal fossa, fossa inguinalis medialis, where uh, superficial inguinal ring is projected. Uh, yes. You have also to revise it for the next lesson about inguinal canal. And laterally, from lateral umbilical folds, uh, there is lateral inguinal fossa where deep inguinal ring is projected. Mm -hmm. So, and please, spleen, you will study it uh, on your own. So, now please take your seats.